Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss about RabbitMQ in .NET Core. Now, RabbitMQ is a vast topic and it is not possible to complete it with one video. So this is going to be a series of videos and in each video, I'm going to take one aspect of the RabbitMQ and walk through it. But before we start understanding what RabbitMQ is, let's discuss why I'm discussing RabbitMQ right now. In my last couple of videos, I discussed about microservices. And if you have not watched my videos, I'm going to provide the link up there as well as in the description. I would suggest you go through this video because it will give you a little bit of context on why RabbitMQ is very important. Now, when we talk about microservices, one of the concepts we discussed is communication between microservices and having a decoupled communication using something like a message queue. And RabbitMQ fits right in there. So what is RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ is a message broker. Now, before I get into what RabbitMQ is let's discuss what is a message broker. A message broker, you can think about it like a post office. Its main responsibility is to broker the message between a publisher and a subscriber or a set of subscribers. Once a message is received by a message broker from a producer, it routes the message to a subscriber. Message broker pattern is one of the most useful pattern when it comes to decoupling microservices. And this is something which I mentioned in my previous videos as well. To understand what a producer is, a producer is an application who is responsible for sending messages. So when you are talking about a couple of microservices, it's one of the microservices who is sending a message. Now a microservice can be both a producer as well as a subscriber. And there are scenarios where it will be the case. A consumer or a subscriber is an application listening for the messages. And the queue is the storage where messages are stored by the broker. And once we get into detail of RabbitMQ, this concept will be more clear. Now let's understand what is RabbitMQ. As I mentioned earlier, RabbitMQ is a message broker. It's an open source message broker, and it is probably one of the most widely used message broker out there. RabbitMQ is extremely lightweight and it's very easy to deploy and I'm going to give a demo of how to install RabbitMQ using Docker and you will see that it's going to literally take like a minute to do it. RabbitMQ support multiple protocols and we are going to discuss the main protocol which is supported by RabbitMQ. And RabbitMQ is highly available and scalable. In terms of availability, from my experience, RabbitMQ never went down in the number of years I have used RabbitMQ. It is extremely reliable. So what are the protocols that are supported by RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ support multiple protocol, but the main protocol which comes out of box is MQP091. And that's the protocol we are going to use when I'm going to go through the demo, but there are multiple other protocols which are supported through plugin. MQP091 is a binary message protocol specification, and this is the core protocol specification implemented by RabbitMQ. All other protocols are supported in RabbitMQ through plugins. So the other protocols supported are STOMP, which is a text-based message protocol, MQTT, which is a binary protocol focusing mainly on published subscribe scenarios, AMQP 1.0. Now AMQP 1.0 is not necessarily an upgrade from AMQP 0.91. It is completely different and it is much more complex. As far as I read through the documentation, it is not supported by most of the clients. And the last one is HTTP and WebSocket. Now it's time to show our demo. And in the demo, we are going to use RabbitMQ and I'm going to use a single producer and consumer scenario for this demo. So for that, first I'm going to create a .NET Core console application, which will act as a producer. Hence, I'm going to create a new .NET Core application and I'm going to name it as RabbitMQ.producer. Now the project is ready, but we need to install RabbitMQ. So let's do that fast before I move on to code it. So I'm going to install a Docker image of RabbitMQ. Now if I do a Docker images 
Right now, I don't have any RabbitMQ image installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a command which is going to install the RabbitMQ as well as it is going to start it at a particular port. So this is the command I'm going to use. It is docker run dash D. The host name, I'm just going to give my rabbit and the name of the instance will be ecom rabbit. And this is very important. We have to expose the ports which we want to access from outside. So the ports that are needed is one is 5672. That is the port used by AMQP protocol. And this is the one we'll use in our code. And the other port is 15672, which is the port used by the management console. Now the RabbitMQ management management console is extremely powerful and we'll see how to use that and I'm going to use the RabbitMQ 3-management image so as you can see it is not able to find the image locally so first it is going to pull down the image from docker install it and then go and start the RabbitMQ engine and as you will see that within a minute the entire thing is installed and now if I do docker logs dash f E67, three digit of the image. You can see the management console is up and running and my RabbitMQ is ready to use. So now if I go to the browser and I open up localhost 15672, it's going to show up the RabbitMQ console. And by default, RabbitMQ has a username as guest and password as guest, so I'm going to use that. And we should change the password after we log in. Now this is the management console. It is extremely helpful and powerful management console. And you can see it's going to give a snapshot of what is the health of this node. And we have a single node. And what is the disk space usage? What is the memory usage? And all these things. This is very powerful and useful. At this point in time, we don't have any queues. So there's no queue. And these are some exchanges and I'll come to exchange and what they mean, how they're used in the next video. For this video, we're just going to focus on queues. This is the admin view where we can go and manage users and other features. For users right now, the guest has access to everything. So we can go and clear the access and give access to what exactly we want, what kind of permission we want to set. If we want to change the password, we can change the password of the guest here. So these are some of the things we can do. Now I'm not going to spend and too much time on RabbitMQ admin screen. If you go through the documentation in the web, it has very good information. But if you like me to cover more on the admin screen, please leave a comment below and I'll cover in subsequent videos. Now let's go back to the project that we have. First thing we have to do is we have to install the NuGet package needed for RabbitMQ. And there is RabbitMQ client. So this is the RabbitMQ.client and as you can see it supports .NET standard version 2.0. So it is going to work for our case. Once it is installed we are going to go back to the main and here we are going to create the publisher or the producer. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a connection factory. So for that we're going to say factory is equal to new of connection factory and for that I need to add the namespace rabbitmq.client and for connection factory we have multiple options to pass we're going to pass the URI and the URI is going to be new of URI and here I'm going to pass the URI of my rabbitmq client that I created and this is going to be the AMQP pattern. So it will be AMQP colon slash slash, the username colon password, at the rate host name and port number. Now we know our RabbitMQ is listening on port 5672 for AMQP. So that's what we have passed. This is the local host. Now we have mapped the port of the Docker container to local host 5672. So if we use local host colon 5672, it's going to call it back to the Docker container. So now we are ready with the factory. After the factory is created, we can create a connection. So we can say, factory dot create connection and this is going to return i connection object 
Now factory has multiple parameters. Now one is provider name where we can create a connection specific to a provider or endpoints, but we are going to use the default one which is without any parameter. After the connection is created, now we need to create a channel. So we are going to do using var connection dot and for this one we are going to use create model which returns an i model which is nothing but a channel created so as you can see in the description it says creates and return a fresh channel session and model now once we have access to the i model what we are going to do now is we have to declare a queue so we're going to use channel dot queue declare and for the queue, we're going to pass the queue name. So we can say the queue name is demo queue. And then the next thing is you see the property as durable. And for durability, we are going to say true because we want the message to hang around there until a consumer reads it. Then the next one is exclusive. So we're going to set it as false. And I'm going to discuss the the concept of exclusive auto delete and arguments later when we get into exchange for the time being i'm going to just set all of them as false and arguments is going to be null and arguments are going to be important when we go and discuss exchanges so here we declare the queue so once we declare queue it's now time to publish a message to this queue so for that first we declare a message or message equal to new. Let's create an anonymous type right now. So it's an anonymous type. The reason I'm creating an anonymous type so that later on in the consumer, we can see that we can pass complex object, not just string. But of course, when we send it, it will be going, we'll be converting into a byte array. So for that, we'll say body is equal to encoding dot. For encoding, I'll add the namespace system dot text utf8 dot get bytes and we need to get byte from a string but the message is an object right now so i'm just going to use json convert and i don't have just newtonsoft.json so i'm just going to install the latest version and then after it is installed i can use the serialize object method and serialize the message now the message body is in byte array format. Now what we can do is we can now say channel dot basic publish. And you can see the publish has an exchange name. So in our case, we are not sending it to any specific exchange. We're going to keep it as empty, but we are going to discuss the significance of this variable in our next video when we are going to discuss about exchanges. But for now, we're going to pass empty. Next one is the routing key. And for routing key, it's nothing but the name of the queue. And when we discussed exchange, it will be clear how queue and write routing key match with each other. And for the basic properties, it's going to be null. And last, we are going to pass the body of the message. So now our producer is ready and it is going to pass this message to the queue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a consumer. And for the consumer also, I'm going to create a sp.net core console application. And I'm going to name it as repeatmq.consumer and once this project is created I'm going to add the same NuGet package and in the program I'll have similar code so I can just copy paste part of the code from here and then we're going to change it for client specific so let's add the namespaces now here after the queue is declared 
We don't need any publisher specific logic. This is where we're going to create a consumer. And we're going to create an eventing basic consumer, which is part of the rabbitmq.client.events namespace. And as you can see, the eventing basic consumer takes an I model in the constructor, which is nothing but the channel. So we're going to pass it. And after the consumer is created, we can do consumer dot receive. And here sender and event arguments. And then we can say body is equal to event dot body, which is a read only memory. And then we can do a two array, which is going to return the byte array of the message. And from here, we can say var message is equal to encoding dot, let's add system dot text namespace here utf8.getString and we're going to pass the byte array which is the body and then finally here we can do console dot write line of the message now I'm not deserializing it into an object I'm just going to print the JSON string as is for the time being and then finally we're going to say channel dot basic consume and for the consume, we have to pass the queue name, which is demo dash q. And auto acknowledge, we're going to set it to true, which means it will automatically acknowledge. We don't have to, we can specifically acknowledge or not inside of the re received message. For the time being, I'm just going to set auto acknowledge equal to true. And then finally, for the consumer, I'm going to pass the consumer object. So now the consumer is ready and set. First, I'm going to run the consumer so that the consumer get a time to subscribe. So if I run the consumer, what we are going to see is I have to give a console.read line here. Otherwise, the consumer will come out. So now the consumer is up and running. What we can do is if I go here, I see that the queue is already created by the consumer. So we have the queue and you can see that one consumer is connected to the queue. There is no message yet. Now if we go back and if we run the producer, which produces a message, so the producer will produce message and come out. Now if you go to RabbitMQ, we should see a message coming in. So here we see the message came in and it's acknowledged by the consumer. And if we go to the consumer, we can see, so here is my RabbitMQ consumer.exe. We can see the name is producer and message is hello is printed by the consumer. And you can see the message has come in and it's been acknowledged by the consumer. Now, if I run the producer again, we will see the consumer getting the message once again. So I'll just do that. And I'll just start without debugging. And we can see the consumer got the second set of message. And if we go to RabbitMQ, we can see the message has been received by the RabbitMQ and then acknowledged by the consumer. So this is single producer consumer scenario through a single queue. And this gives you a very basic introduction of RabbitMQ. Again, RabbitMQ is fast. This is very basic introduction, but it shows you how easy it is to install, start running and using RabbitMQ in .NET Core. It literally took less than a minute to install the RabbitMQ in a Docker container, get it up and running. As you can see, it is still running here. And then we have the management console and then created a consumer and producer within few minutes and get going. That's all I wanted to cover today. In my next video, I'll start with a single producer, multiple consumer scenario with a queue. And then I'll go on using exchange and describe more about the exchange and how everything works with an exchange. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to it. Thanks so much for watching this video.